it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a warm, friendly vermicompost community, you are in the right place. Today we're looking in on blue. And first what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of a harvest here because I need to get some of the old material out to accommodate building this bin up. Because I was gifted four pounds of worms and now we are up to 15, no, 20 to 25 pounds of worms in the system and they're gonna need a little bit more real estate. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take this tote here and just get as much as I can without taking the worms with me. I'm starting a new raised bed this weekend so I can use this material even if I don't sort it. It can go in with the rest of the soil and it'll be just fine. So as you can see, moving things out of this far end, although there are still some chunks and stuff, I'm not running into any worms. And that is kind of the whole point of this system is that they get finished and moved to the area with the most recent feeding. So that way I don't have to worry about um, sorting worms like I do in the other systems. Now this is a 10 gallon container. And it looks like I'm going to need another one. Oops, one worm. Maybe. <laughs> so I won't sift this at all. This will go straight into the new raised bed as is. And this is still a really good moisture. With all the rain I've been having here, quite honestly, uh, the castings aren't drying out very quickly. So this actually kind of does me a favor that I'm putting in a new bed because that way I don't have to sift these. Normally I put them through a one quarter inch screen and uh, take all of the leftovers and put them back at the beginning of the bin like this, like a pumpkin stem, pumpkin stem that's been in there for a couple years. All right, and then I've got a three gallon bucket here that I can continue to get as much castings out of here as I can to make room. I actually, I will put the video in there of when I unboxed these worms, but I wasn't ready to do a blue video when they came. And I didn't want to take the chance of them being not healthy, so I will put that video of the unboxing in here so you can see how they looked when they were first out of the package to give you an idea of what the supplier is like. They're called New Soil. Okay, here's the second unboxing. These are supposed to be Euros and blue worms and red wigglers. And as you can see, when I opened the box, none had escaped the box, but they definitely escaped their packaging. So these guys are gonna go all live in blue. So whatever the population is, they're gonna all go live, live in blue. And that maybe indicates there's five pounds in here. So let's see what five pounds of uh, brand new worms looks like. Okay, here we go. And this is a whole mess of worms. These are what I've come to come to know as red wigglers and blue worm mix. They're about the same size as what I have in my own population. So these guys ought to do just fine in here they came again this is a normal package that i've seen other professional people use and yet the little guys did escape their packaging to the internal packaging which is this foil stuff but you can see foil seems to have kept them from getting into the box and escaping out into the world the people at my post office are eternally grateful none of the worms escaped out, but they definitely got out of that bag, so I don't know what to say about that, you know, for to help the new soil people, you know, get that sorted out. But they're all healthy. There's no smell of dead worms. They are all, there's a euro. They're all happy little critters, so I don't, they just don't like being contained as far as I can tell. And I'll let these guys get all settled in. All right, so I think that's pretty good. We've got about, I don't know, 13 gallons. So I can just take the rest of this now and move it down like we do with the wedge. 
And so just proper maintenance of the wedge is making sure that you're getting air into these super clumpy parts that haven't been touched in nearly a month. I only come in here about once every three to four weeks and fluff them and feed them, make sure everything's okay, but you can see how wet that is. That definitely needs to get some air in there. And I just, you know, turn it completely over and then they will, you know, kind of get the idea that this is now the area they should leave. I don't know if they can perceive food from one end of the bin to the other. I hope they can. That, they usually go in the right direction. I don't normally find worms at the wrong end, so that'll work. So these guys will move out and start moving towards the, the end that we always feed. Now we're getting to the part that's probably been fed about three to four months ago. Lots more worms and lots more leftovers. To be expected. Wait a minute, is that? I haven't seen a stubby worm in forever. This is where I don't know if the worm just was weird when it was born or what, but this worm is, it's not a half of a worm. This is a whole worm that just isn't very big. I used to see those a lot when I was first into worm farming. I don't probably look at them as closely now as I did when I first got them. It's kind of one of those new worm farmer things where you're constantly looking in on your worms like every day like what are you doing buddies nowadays they're kind of like uh teenagers i just kind of let them do what they're gonna do put in the comments below how often do you look in on your worms and how big is your bin with this 55 gallon or 208 liter bin there are an enormous amount of worms in here as well as the rest of the ecosystem that eats all the food in here. These guys go through a lot of food and a lot of bedding. One of the things that I'm gonna do to refresh the bed this time is to put in some used potting soil. And uh, that should hopefully give them enough real estate to um, account for the other four pounds of worms that got added, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. All right, let me move the camera down and we'll get to the business end of the bin. Okay, so here we are, we're past the halfway mark. We're gonna start running into a lot of worms. Not really a worm ball per se, but lots and lots of worms, especially now that I have uh, four pounds from new soil that were added to the already, you know, more than 15 pounds of worms that is in here normally. Now usually, we'll, we'll see if this population gets bigger, which is why I'm trying to make the area um, deeper and have a greater real estate because um, I think it's kind of at its carrying capacity already. So we'll see. We'll go ahead and see if the worms in here can get into a higher density. Now the worms, uh, you'll see the video, but the worms that they gave me are little like mine. So they're not like those crazy big um, European night crawlers that I, I got. And uh, that is fine with me simply because my worms tend to stay in this rather small state because they are in such a high density. They, um, tend to not be as big, but more numerous. And um, as far as what I've seen in the textbooks, that's pretty normal that they do that. So you can just see exactly how much worms are in here. And the eggshell and everything is throughout. I've been feeding probably more eggshell recently, but I've been feeding it in the pureed state. And so I think hopefully that's helping them to make better use of all the food that I feed them, especially now that it is summertime and there are the temperatures nice and warm so they can really, really get into it and eat a lot. So we're starting to get into maybe a worm ball. 
maybe. So you can see a little bit of the paper there. Now I did, the previous one, I did go ahead and put some African night crawlers in here to see if they would help with some of the bedding. I don't see any escapees. So to me, that kind of means they stayed put because generally when they escape, um, you find worm jerky, you know, on the side or on the brick or something. And uh, I'm not seeing any of that when I came into the room. Okay, so still had some bedding left. I gave a lot of bedding last time, which is something that I very much believe in. I think there's, you can never give too much bedding, especially in an established system where you have, uh, you know, white mites and springtails and isopods. Oh my my cork. All right, so we have made a big bit of real estate over here, which is great because I have a huge, huge feeding for them. And I also have that potting soil that I want them to kind of refresh. It was used and it was starting to get kind of like a mold on it. So I think the worms and all of their buddies can eat all of that mold and also refresh the nutrients in the potting soil and I can take it out with one of the harvests in a couple of months. So first things first, let's go ahead and get one of those buckets of pre-composted soil. So this is a five gallon bucket and it's got sticks in it and stuff and it's a little bit dry so we're gonna get it some water. Okay. Got my bucket of aged water over on the other side of the room and so this will hopefully get this to a better moisture it doesn't look a, i think that's a ginger growing well that's crazy i'm gonna put that outside in my garden i do grow gardens seasonally here usually i sprout it in january and then put it outside and it will actually make me new hands of ginger over the course of uh, the season here in zone five. Okay, so first things first, here is my first batch of food that I'm gonna lay down. Just kitchen scraps, leftover soup. I'm gonna get them another bowl of food. So remember, if you don't have a worm bin that is this huge, you absolutely cannot feed this kind of food or this much food. Um, there is 20 pounds of worms in this bin and they're not going to eat a kitchen sponge. Um, so there are 20 pounds of worms in here. Unless you have that huge of a bin, do not feed this much. Like I said, this is five and a half feet long, two feet wide and one foot deep. I'll put the diagram up there. But a lot of uh, experienced worm farmers kind of chastise me in the comments sometimes like, don't tell the new people that they can feed this much food because it's gonna rot and kill their worms. I'm telling you, unless you have a huge bin, you cannot feed them three gallons of food. So just beware. But if you have a huge bin and you do have this many worms, it is absolutely possible to go through this much food. Some of this has been frozen. Some of them like the carrot tops have not. Uh, some peppers. There's no forbidden foods in my book, only foods that will attract pests. So in my mind, uh, forbidden food is something that's gonna make the pests go crazy, like meat, um, which I did have a little project that I did that you can look into the playlists. I actually did feed a bin meat for almost a year. Had a lot of, lot, a lot of pest problems. So I do not recommend unless um, you have an outside bin. I'm gonna go get their pureed eggshell, which has a little bit of pureed banana in it for grit, so that they will be able to digest all this food in record time. Okay, so this is probably a quart and a half of pureed eggshell and banana. So about a liter, give or take. And all the eggshells have been cooked. The banana was frozen originally. But this will be a nice bit of grit for them so that they can get to this food very quickly. Now for the rest of the bedding. And I've got the roots for some plants in here. They'll be able to take care of that as well. Should probably dig that a little bit deeper. 
so the mites and stuff can get at that. Yep, kind of need a buried. One more. And you can see that the potting soil had some of this uh, lica in it. I'm going to have to um, <laughs> sift that out at some point. Okay. And this is really not a good moisture for the worms either. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more water. Clean off my hands a little. There we go. That was uh, probably about a gallon or four liters of water that I put in there. Hopefully that will give those worms enough real estate that they can be happy um, with me adding basically a third more to the population. I will go ahead in the pinned comment, I will put the link to the worm company that gifted me the worms and also the micro shots. I was gifted a micro camera attachment and that's what I took those micro pictures with and I will link that below as well. Super cool, it does almost as good as my real microscope and it attached to my camera. Okay, so if you wanted to see more of this big huge worm bin, I have a playlist that I will put right over there. And if you've already seen most of that, then YouTube of course thinks you're going to like this right there. Okay guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.